he doesn't respect his fences the way he should um, and unless he gets one very wrong yeah. he'll be fine she looks like she'd be the easiest horse in the whole of, at the whole of the Cheltenham Festival to steer around who would you like to be riding if you had one ride at Cheltenham Hello, welcome to the Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. My name is Leona Mayer and on this week's episode we're going to be ranking our top five favourites for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival then. The five Cheltenham Festival favourites then I'd like us to rank are at Ballyburn in the Supreme Novices Hurdle, Marine National for the Arkle, Al Fabiolo in the Queen Mother Champion Chase, Tia Poo for the Stayers and Galapant Deschamps for the Gold Cup. Got your whiteboards? That's right. Okay. Before we reveal our top five, then please remember to subscribe to the William Hill Racing Channel. New episodes of the Inside Track the Debate will be released every single week. Everybody's ready, I think, then before we reveal our Cheltenham Festival winners in order of the, the likeliness that we think that they're going to win. Ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, all different. Oh. Okay, um, let's start with Al Fabiolo at the top, Barry, because me and you have both put him in exactly the same place. So Al Fab for the Queen Mother. Yeah, um, I think jumping is the only thing that could get this fella beaten. And he's managed to win the Arkle. He has managed to win his chases so far this season. I think he's very good. Um, obviously, John Bond is his main danger. Um, but he, you know, he beat him well at the Arkle in spite of Not jumping making well. a bit of a mess of the last. Mm. So I think he's a very, very good horse. Um, he would be, the, for me, the most likely of the five. Agreed. To win. I mean, because how good would he be if he jumped better? As in the mistakes he makes. Lucinda talked earlier about horses and at different times having to find other legs and keep themselves up he, he, as much as he makes mistakes. Yeah, I don't know. They're only untidy mistakes. They're not yeah. necessarily... He has so much class that they don't stop his momentum. Yeah. You know, he, he just gallops through them. Now, he, he didn't jump badly in, in Leopardstown last time, but his jumping in Cork, the first step, probably not as good, but it was his first run back. He was a bit fresh. Um so he, I'd say he just he's, he doesn't respect his fences the way he should um, and unless he gets one very wrong yep. he'll be fine Agreed You put him very far down AP in fourth I put him far down because I, I actually just put them in the order of the ones I think would be the easiest to ride The reason why I didn't put El, El Fabio at the top is because um, You're more likely to fall off him so you just No, not really I don't think I, 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 Look, he is probably he is probably the best horse I just have a little thing that and maybe have a soft spot for John Bond, but I do not think any stage last year before Chatham that he was at his best. Okay. And I know he got beat the last day um, in the Clarence House. Um, and I think with um, Alan King's horse, Edward Stone, after m making the run the other day in New York, he's going to a good yeah, gap. And I actually okay. think it will suit John Bond. Okay. You know, look, the ground is a big thing for a lot of horses in Chatham. It's definitely, look, if the ground is slow, it's going to help Al Fabiola a lot, which... You you've ranked these the ones that you'd you'd rather ride. I put GDC last. Well, yeah. Well, ones that, well not not no, no, not, no, not no. that I'd rather ride, but the ones that I think if you'd be most likely to win on. But yeah, you, you've started with two hurdlers. Is that a reflection <laughs> on you're pushing on to <laughs> fifty? Brain, he brain, wants to ride brain, over hurdles and fences. No, well, it's probably there's there's probably less risk in them, isn't it? There? Well, that's what I'm saying. So reflection. More chance than more. It's, it's not ages of maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's probably more chance than winning. And I actually put the novice chaser third. On, I noticed that. On, no, yeah. I did, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. And so, so I, I, I'm just thinking if you were asked me to go on the Chatham Festival, I, thinking what, which ones do I think have? Gallop in the Shump is a brilliant horse. His two performances have been unbelievable this year, but he is running the Gold Cup, and it's very hard to win back to back Gold Cups. Yeah. So it is, it's very hard to win back to Gold back Gold Cups. He is trained by a genius. Um, and look, he may be ridden a little differently last year. I thought he. Paul give him a brilliant ride it may have happened by circumstance or a lot you could actually looking at him the way he's been ridden the last twice he could end up riding him much differently this year than he did than he did last year and the reason why Al Fabiola is there is because I, I, I have a bit of a soft spot for John Bond and I, but I do think genuinely he, he wasn't as good okay. last year in the article as he had been even afterwards at Liverpool and this then at season, Sandown with the exception thought, of Cheltenham the last days first couple of runs this season have been I uh, well, I, best I, I thought in the Schlorer chase there was, I, I thought, you know, that he, he, 
you know that he looked like a proper two miler. He saves a little bit for himself. Mm. The more aggressively he'll be ridden, the better he'll be. Okay. I wonder in terms of Willie Mullins picking up. I mean, Lousy Mouth will obviously be his one that's think he's definitely going to win at Chatham, maybe. But if you're looking at these bigger races, or you know, Ballyburn is the one I'd say he'd pick out to be high on his list of ones that he thinks will definitely have the best chance of winning. Okay. Tia Poo, I think, is a year older. Barry, do you think is he better? I, absolutely. I think for the stairs hurdle, he's the one to beat for me. Um, Irish Point is where Tia Hooper was last year, a six year old. Mm. It's a big difference Hard, around the new course in Cheltenham. N10 gallop on the stairs so I think Tia Hooper going there fresh put in a brilliant performance in the Hatton's Grace both last year um, mm. and this year first run of the season so no, I, for me he would be one of the bankers as in a solid banker Tia Hooper but there is a bit of depth there as well so I wouldn't just yeah. I wouldn't oh, yeah and it's what, not what, what in, I, you've Maria and Ashton at the the, at the, I, I, I know I can see why he'd be at the bottom because he, he cut a complete blowout last time I think it's ground. Well, yeah, well, we've all we've all agreed yeah. on putting him on. I mean, he did run. Yeah, but I think it's ground. They yeah. were very much worried about soft ground last year through the season. He won the Royal Bond, good performance, but just scraped in on soft ground. I think it's found him out. And I, I personally, I have a view that some horses don't handle soft ground over fences, haven't handled them over hurdles. And the, the two I'd have... Oh, yeah, because they, yeah, they've got to harder. jump bigger and come uh, up For Paddy the Pastor... Yeah. won a grade one novice hurdle on heavy ground he couldn't he couldn't win a good race good chase on soft Finian's rainbow similar was placed in the shallow on heavy ground couldn't operate over fences just there's more effort involved so it's not the case across the board but I think he's one of those horses is he travelled unbelievable he travelled mm. like he always does and he jumped pretty well and then he just found absolutely nothing yeah. but it was pra- you think the ground was, when he come yeah. off the bridle it was old ground as well enjoy it so it's a, but he wants so he wants the right condition he's a spring horse yeah. Um, I, and I think actually if they ride him more forward in the Arkle I think he's got a better chance yeah he was keen as well wasn't he um, no, not so much keen I, I think horses have a better chance of winning problems riding them more even riding them like and he's a very he's end to end he, he's only ran twice over fences but he looks a very very bright jumper yeah oh he's very good he yeah. looks very neat yeah. and clever and quick and I think a Nasset and a two mile you know as good as well as anyone but a Nasset and a two mile novice chest to be jumping is because then, and then if you're making ground all the time rather than mm. not saying that he didn't he didn't take it away from him in that first time but he never got a chance of making ground the last day whereas when he out in his novice chase I know it was easier in his novice chase the first day to make the run and let him pop away but he was his rhythm was was I think on the right ground away from on the right yeah, ground it, it'll yeah. happen naturally yeah. for yeah. him and even yeah. then he could be keener that he, he might benefit on a fast run Arkle yeah. 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 being slotted yeah. in and, yeah. and find, he'll jump his way into position um but he is a, he's a smart horse. Mm. Lucinda, you probably put Marine National at the bottom like us for that same reason, but you've put Gallopan at the top who you've got to try and beat. I know. Well, I um, <laughs> I think Alvin to Sean, I mean, he's the class horse. Of course he is. Uh, he did get beaten by fast or slow, um, but I think he's, as you said, he's trained by Maestro and he's going to be ready for the day. I think this is... He's he's the most rock solid of them. I mean, all of these horses, it's very hard to rate them. I'm but they say we're saying positive, spent them all on. Yeah, but, you but I, I, I put him at the top. You said to me what you thought was the most likely. Having said that, I think he'll be a bit scared if there's a little white nose appears beside <laughs> his, <laughs> beside his coming up the running. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're child and ready. Are you? Get a five pound free bet every day, child. We're pretty undecided then on our Cheltenham Festival f- favourites, let's be honest. But we've got a fair few others I think we could give a mention to. Horses who either tips or uh, kind of information as regards favourites, what you think, what the win. Lucinda, I know you've got some kind, positive words about one of yours. Yeah, it's um, these are sort of rock solid favourites. But we run a mare in the Ultimo who's just uh, dropped a little bit in the handicap from her last run. Uh, and I think she's pretty well handicapped. Apple away in the Ultima. Um it's a handicap. Uh, we won it last couple of years, and I think she's got the sort of profile. Although she's a novice, she'll come off a fast pace, and I think she she should be one that should be at the top of your list. Yeah, her syndicate at the superstars aren't they? Old gold. They've had a lot of good horses coming through, and I thought it'd be nice for them to have a big winner, wouldn't it? Well, another one. Yeah, they're one of these microshare syndicates, so they and they're just so enthusiastic. It's wonderful. It's it's they're very very lucky to have such a sort of game and, and tough mare. Um, and I don't know, mare's mare's just a they just get hold of your heart a bit, don't they? They are uh, anyway. So yeah, apple away in the ultimate. Fabulous females. Um, 
Barry? A horse I really like who would excite me is Factifile. Um, another one of Willie's, JP owns him. He's just, to me, he just said he's a monster. Uh, jumping is brilliant. Travels, stays. He's just, he's, he was he was even brilliant as point to point. He's, to me, he's the, he is as close as you'll get to the complete racehorse. And I think he's one with massive potential. Probably not just obviously got beaten the bumper in Florida Pearl, didn't mm. But when you hear Willie mention him, like he talks about him like Florida Pearl. I mean, like that's some even when he, when, horse that Willie's had. He when, he, when he won his beginner's chase, yeah. he's this second go to the top. And you know, Willie isn't talking about the top of the novice chase division. He's gone all the way. So no, he's like when you're Willie saying it, the performance on his novice chase, the time I believe he clocked Down the in back, comparison to El Fabiolo yeah, yeah. over two miles was something similar. Like that's off the charts. And it's just so easy for him. I think he's, he's, he is a future star. Uh, Lousy mouth is you know, obviously a good thing in the mirrors no, was her, and mirrors hurdle, isn't she? You know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, she run the champion hurdle." But if you put on a race for mirrors, then why wouldn't Willie go and win it? Like, and and she is only, I suppose, that they do at that age are better off with another year. And the option, I think, she's just, I know she's got Astro Diamond and a few other Willies to beat, but I mean, she's probably she, the biggest steering job in Jotlam, is she? She's head and shoulders and a bit above what she faced. If she turns up, which she should, she turns up every other day. Yeah. They'll be very lucky if she doesn't. Yeah. She, in terms of steering one around, yeah. she looks like she'd be the easiest horse in the whole of the, at the whole of the Chatham Festival to steer around. I think Lozzy Mouth would be the easiest to steer around. Who would you like to be riding if you had one ride at Cheltenham? Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me think about that. So you don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, and and I know I put gap in the champ at the bottom, but I suppose you'd you want to, you want to, yeah, you could, yeah, you'd, you'd, yeah, you'd <laughs> want to, you know, you want to win the champion or the gold cup. We're probably a bit out of practice, though, in fairness, to give Gallop and the champ, you know, the the yeah, right. You, you think you'd find it easier? It could be easier to go around across <laughs> You'd be jumping the third last first time you've the cramp <laughs> in the back of your leg. Yeah, yeah, you think it? Yeah, at least Paris probably right. It'd probably even <laughs> at our age, we'd probably win in Constitution Hill. Yeah. <laughs> So being jockeys and a trainer of Cheltenham Festival runners, winners, etc., the pressures that come into it, I have to assume, not that I rode any decent horses, but um, no offence to the owners, um, when you're riding something, especially if it's a very short price, there has to be added pressure, professional or non-professional, you've got that pressure on paper to the general public to win, to train the winner, surely. <laughs> well, if the one I suppose the, the biggest certainty I had was Sprinter Sacra, and was he two to nine or something like that in the Champion Chase? Um, no, no pressure. Um, because Just don't feel how anymore. how badly wrong would I have to get it to get him beaten? Like, but all surely I, then you're worried about that? No, no. It's, I'm, I'm probably I'm not an overthinker because I. I don't, don't have the capability for it. Um, <laughs> I remember going down actually going to, going to start in his article the previous year, so he was odds on favourite he was well talked about that season as being the one and going to the start and I was getting a little bit I was starting to think about it and I said you know just pull myself out and I said no just do what you do any day of the week this is just you know trust your instinct so you have a plan pop out fourth or fifth just carry it through you know you know you're going to make the right decisions at each fence or at each stage so I suppose that was the to me the point where I was thinking no there's no benefit in pressure so mm-hmm. or, or worrying about it so as champion chess no um, but I also remember going out on um, Deffy Blue was uh, not Deffy Blue uh, Deffy Desai Deffy Desai a two to five in the championships yeah. and was beaten after three fences so there was definitely no pressure there <laughs> but uh, that was different he disappointed but no for me Sprinter Sacker was yeah. no but take. you even just said there you, you, you know you're going to make the right decisions that's again a mindset isn't it it's having the confidence to actually just know it's going to go take yourself you know, the whole. take yourself out of the moment it is mm. And just go to what you would do if it was a not 102 chase in Fakin. You know you're going to do the, you know, by the law of average, you're going to make the right decisions. But you'd have to make a howler of a bad mis- decision to get one of those beaten. You feel the same? Yeah. I mean, once you've done it for so long. Yeah. You, but, but before? I think you go through different stages, not different stages, but if you look at someone like, for instance, Paul Town and going to Chatham, you know, and even I, I think I heard Willie Mullen speaking about it the other day about, you know, he's been to Chatham not last year, maybe the year before, and he had no winners for, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday. I think the yeah. amount of favourites that he had Tuesday and Wednesday and they get beat, you think, and this is Willie Mullins. Yeah. You know, his horses are gone, they're out of, they're out of form, they're 
everything he's actually sent it himself everyone's saying all oh, that they're you know he's not going to be winner. and the next day he wins he has five winners he has <laughs> four winners on thursday and five winners on on friday so yeah, yeah. so in two days it can change so there is a di- not that different mindset but if you have you know if you have if el fabiola doesn't win or if ballyburn doesn't win or if galton Deschamps doesn't win or if lousy mouth doesn't win or factor file doesn't win <laughs> do you know what i mean i mean we're not thinking is there something on them or not or, not so much that but i think there's probably a different um, a not a, not that there's not a relaxed mindset but if you get beaten one you've got a better one than the next race mm. Do you know what I mean? It's a big it, it would be harder if you were going there with one yeah. superstar. Yeah. yeah. And he or, gets beaten. Or you're going there with one ride, you know, you you know, uh, you, you beat you beat you, I've been to Cheltenham festivals where I have a, a, an okay ride on the Tuesday and an okay ride on the Wednesday and you think you think this need, one of these needs to win like. Do you know what I mean? That that and it's not pressure from anyone else, it's pressure from yourself. It needs yeah. to win. Yeah, exactly. Whereas you know, if you're going out in Ballyburn and if he's running the Supreme or if Tully Hill's running the Supreme and then you're going out in the Arkle and whatever one Willie has, El Tompa too or whatever, and then, you know, and then you've got State Man, Chapman Hurley might not be at Constitution Hill, but, but then you've got Lousy Mouth. In the f- but you'll take them on one at a time. One at a time, yeah. Won't be, you know, you won't be yeah. looking and at you get, tomorrow. And if you get beat on one, But it's a nice feeling, it's a nice one. feeling going out and think, oh, well, there's another, I've got another chance here. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, and yeah. after that. And this one's eight to, f- this one's eight to 15, so it doesn't really matter. Not, but you know what I'm saying? There is yes. a little different mindset, but, you know, I suppose, Barry, that's the difference between, you know, a, 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 there's a more chance of a good jockey winning a good horse than yeah. getting beaten it, do you know what I mean? And the same from a training point of view. Well, if you've not got many, if you've got one runner, two runners, the pressure um, of that. I don't think the, the number of runners, but for me, if you know, as a trainer, you know what they're like at home. So you know if they've had a, an issue or a problem or, or you know, even like little things that can hold them back if they've missed a couple of days training, that would make me more nervous than... Uh, whether they're good or not. I mean, if they're to be at Cheltenham, they're brilliant horses. Yeah. They've, they've got ability, and um, I always think your mindset's right. It's not about things going wrong. It's about how far you can win by. You know, that's the that's the thing. And it's you going to Cheltenham as well. There is nothing worse than waking up in the morning and not having nerves or not feeling that. Oh, you need to get to your A game. You need because to be on if edge. you're going to, if you're looking at the newspaper on the Wednesday of Cheltenham, you're thinking. You know, you're going to sleep the night before thinking, oh, no. oh my God, I have got four rides tomorrow. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know which one of them's the best. Fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. You know, or, or you're going out, you know, you go through different stages in your life. You go out with, and Barry will tell you, with different pressures, whether it be from riding a really good horse or from someone having a lot of money on horses, like, you know, and so it's, it's, it's different, you know, it is different, but you need to wake up in the morning, don't you? And have oh, little, I want us, yeah, want to have a little bit of nerves in the morning and you think the excitement. Yeah, but that's, oh, yeah. but even any day of the week, you need you need a yeah. certain level of nerve just to get you, you know, to get your reactions on cue, yeah. that you're, you're instant. Um, but I remember myself when you're being second in the first three races and waiting for a winner on Friday. Oh, it's, it's isn't it painful? And it, yeah, but, it, but it's, 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 it's what's the, the big thing does, you analyse them all individually. Should I have won on one of them? Now maybe I could have or I should have. Um, they weren't screaming that I should have. Or there was no one screaming that I mm. should have as such. But to me, you need a little, a certain level of self-forgiveness that you don't carry that yeah, as yeah, a negative. Yeah, yeah. You roll into the next one. You know, this will win, this will win. You're not just dreaming, but you're, you're focusing on what you can do to win, not what you would do or could do to get beaten. Yeah, and surely as a, as a, both of you two, as a jump jockey, once you've been riding for many, many years, um, the mistakes you would assume become very few. So you've got, you assume you look at many races where you've got beat and most of the time it's not your fault and you have to accept that it's not your fault. It you just got beat by a better horse or the horse didn't jump well. Enough. Whatever it might be, you've got to come away from it knowing that it wasn't your fault and not just thinking I could have done. You weren't very good at it when we did our filming, if you remember in the cinema and every race where you beat him, he said, oh, if I'd have only done it, if I'd have only done it. Do you remember? Yeah, but like, <laughs> the, only, the only saving thing I had, I, I, I rode 14,000 losers, like, so. I was the losing most jockey ever until Dickie. <laughs> <me. So, laughs> but, but, you, you know, mentioned that once or twice. Poor, yeah, Dickie. Yeah, yeah, I, keep, I, I, I love it bringing up. I love giving Dickie that, the credit of that. But, um, <laughs> no, it's not, that's the, the advantage of having, the advantages, I suppose, of being a jockey and, or, or, or rather than other sports people is that, you know, it, you've got another chance in the next race. It's gone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A good or bad, it's gone. If you have a good book, but if you yeah. are a writer going to Cheltenham, with and that was one, your one. <laughs> where, that was your one. And if you made whatever decision you made and it's it got beaten, <laughs> and it wasn't, and it's one you're reflecting, think, uh, I'd have done that differently if I was doing it again. And that was it. That's your only chance. That's, That's a hard place to be. But Paul Townend, 
or someone with the caliber or Harry Cobb to Nick on the Bonville. If it doesn't work on one, move on, next one. Don't let the yeah. past affect the future. Do what you do. And is it true, like always, people always say, oh, I've, you know, you win on the Tuesday. Does that then mean that you ride with more confidence on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? If you, or if you come second on the Tuesday and the Wednesday and the Thursday, are you winding yourself up to win on the Friday? I rode five winners in 2003 um, when it was three days. And I did double the first day. I never walk alone. Um, and at the pretense for John Joe. Championship second day for Moscow. And then I won the train for John Joe the third day. And I rode spirit leader in the county for Jessie. She was after winning the William Hill in Sandown. She won the, the good handicap in Newbury, the Todd Cole Trophy. Yeah, yeah. I thought, this is no chance. She's way too much weight. I floated around. I was after them four winners. I was after them a brilliant week. Floated around the middle. Next thing, found myself jumping the second last. I'd done all the right things by not being caught up in the moment. And I found myself jumping the second last about three lands down, arriving there and get time to salute the crowd with 50 <laughs> yards to go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We can't make a unanimous decision then on our Cheltenham favourite. Um, can you let us know in the comments uh, who you think should be at the top of the list? Thanks for watching Inside Track The Debate. If you'd like to see us rank our top five Grand National winners, uh, click the link that's on the screen. This show was brought to you by William Hill. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly.